they gonna say these two niggas? Oh yeah, oh, they yeah. got it to him there. Mm-hmm. Dave Cha-Ching, Mr. Gimme Three, man. I'm here, man. Ross Sloan, the voice, Zone Six, the voice of Brooklyn, the voice of the city, in my opinion right now. way coaches coach players introduce yourself you know we got a nice audience so i want everybody to introduce themselves and you know we go from there yeah patrick masseroni uh step and act graduate class of 2006 and uh finished up my eighth year as the head coach here uh my name is jordan gabriel i'm a junior video of new york um boogie flan class of 2024 ross new york ben little class of 2023 new rochelle new york Dan Carbusio, class of 2025, from Yonkers. Uh, Braylon Ritvold, class of 2024, from Los Angeles, California. Before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll see y'all. Oh, y'all be out there inside jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see what's going on. No, but um, last weekend was very, very long season. Can can we um tell us a little bit about it? Like, I know, I know. Gearing up for, can we say, um, Haynes a rivalry now? They're part of a rival? I guess so. I guess so. They, you know, they, uh, you know, the last two years, we played them eight times. Jeez. You know, 4-4 four, four, four split. Uh, sold out games, packed houses. Yes. Uh, media attention. So I would say that, that equates to a, a rival, in my opinion. I agree. Boogie, what you think? I, mean, I, don't, I don't feel like it's a rivalry, you know. We played them a couple times, but that I don't feel like that makes it a rivalry. Uh, I mean, but out, but out of all the other schools, uh, y'all seeing them a little bit too much. But y'all seeing them where you need to see them at the championship, which is cool. Yeah. So, I, you know, after losing and then getting ready for the cities, how y'all felt? I mean, we was ready, you know, like, I mean, we just wanted some revenge, you know. From last year, we, we came up short to this year, uh, losing in the Archdiocese by I think 20, was it? 19, something like that? 15, 15. Hands, 15. hands and feet, look at Ben. You need to talk. <laughs> 15, ben, ben, you ain't sleeping, you ain't sleeping since that, Ben. <laughs> but nah, losing 15 in the Archdiocese and coming out, what was up, 19 to 38 or something like that? Right? Yeah. Um, just coming out, playing hard, and you know, getting revenge. That's really what we wanted. You know what I wanted to do different, right? I told IK Pass that I wanted to get more than just Boogie, because you know, they always, Get the light on Boogie. I said, make sure I've been there and get out of a couple guys, cause I'm pretty sure without them, sure. it's, it's no, it's no, 
So tell me, what's, what was the preparation like getting ready? I know the season, y'all got some goals. Was these part of the checklist, the goals? Federation part of the checklist? I would say we talk all the time here. I think early on when uh, Swain and I took over, it was what could we do early on to, to turn this program around? Oh. Um, back to what Stepanak was, right? And if you walk in our gym, there was a, a was. Um, the, the previous regime, the previous two years, right, was, was ugly. It was not, you know, what Stepanak basketball was about. And as this progressed, we talk about winning city championships. If you read articles and you read posts, people talk about getting to the quarters at Fordham. People talk about getting to the Final Four. People talk about not city championships. Our goal every year is how do we protect our home court? How do we excel on the national level? Uh, and how do we get to that Sunday, which is usually at Fordham, but how do you get to that Sunday city championship game and, and be victorious? Uh, and that's what we talk about. There's, there's nothing else. Uh, there's no win 15 games, 20 games, you know, beat one school and, and celebrate a certain way. It's, it's city champions. Or, or we feel that, that we haven't hit our ultimate goal. And that's what we talk about all the time as a, as a group from November to, to last week. Ben, you might be one of the hardest working men in the Catholic League, probably the last two or three years. I mean, Sean, some light, how, how, you, how you prepare for basketball games? Because I know sometimes, like I said, the lights be on, Boogie, Danny, Coach get some lights. My young studs here get some lights, but they don't really get to know like what Ben do. Okay, so I always um, read a Bible verse before a game, and then besides that, I'm always listening to my music, of course, jumping rope, and um, on my band. And another thing I do before every single game on our bus ride or in front of our locker room is watch this video of Dennis Rodman highlights and just how hype he used to get okay. and that energy. And I try to bring that energy every single game and then some. What, what I think got you over the edge, I'm, I'm, I'm still a little baffled why these coaches ain't um, do their job, but that's for another day. But I see you now, you hitting the shot. Previous years, you couldn't step out and hit nothing. I was I was worried. This season, you kind of got locked in. Now they're leaving you open. You're knocking a 15 footer down. Like how? Like from last year to now, what was the transition like? Cause I know like some days you was off, couldn't hit nothing. But then Pat, I'm like, oh Pat, y'all kicking him to him at the wing, the elbow, he in the three every now and then. The percentage is going up. So like, what? How you prepared for this season? Uh, for this season, I, work, I worked out all summer uh, with daily maintenance, and um, after every single practice, me and Howard Ozzie Jr. Um, make at least 100 shots after every single practice. So that repetition um, really built my confidence in my shooting. And Howard, and Howard can shoot the ball. Yeah. He, he has some big... Pat, how you plug these young guys in, though? Like, I get... <laughs> I don't know how some coaches, they want to bring the transfers in. Some coaches want to do this. You just bringing the kids up. And some freshmen was ready to go. Some days, Boogie was out. Danny was out. You was plugging freshmen in. And, and like, how you, how you get to plug them guys in and have them ready to play at these, these bigger games? Because, you know, the lights is on y'all, like, every game. Yeah, I would just say, you know, hit on first. And I, I kind of went on a rant in the semifinal versus Christ the King about these colleges with Ben. Um, you know, unfortunately, and Ben knows I said this, so I'm not hiding it, you know, behind his back. Ben to the college game isn't as sexy. Yeah. Right? They want mm -hmm. long, athletic, yeah. you know, hands down to here, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But Ben's a winner. So what I keep telling guys, if you want sexy, then don't take Ben. If you want a winner, right, he says he watches Dennis Rodman. You know, if That's you want that type of player, mm -hmm. uh, but a great human, and a 4.0 GPA, and you're watching this, then take a winner. Because I think these guys are, are, are getting fired or in the verge of losing their yeah. contracts because they don't have winners. So that's one there. In regards to the other, the other part, I would say these guys, and four of them are underclassmen here, um, I get the credit. I get the fame. It, it's, it's my staff. 
you know, um, Swain, who everybody knows has been with me from day one, and we've added in Al Shep and, and Alexis Nunez, two guys that played college basketball, you know, Al that played overseas, that all, f- all three of them bring a different dynamic. And, and I think if you look at every guy in this program from year one to year eight, has been development. Um, and, and in addition to development, I told our guys, you can't tell us this year we weren't in a situation Right, we played the number three team in the country. No, we were the favorites in a lot of games. We had sold out crowds. We had media. We were on national TV. We played bigger teams. We played smaller teams. We played guys ranked higher than these guys. So we were prepared for every situation. And I think the young guys, uh, as the season went, just continued to learn and continue to mature. And then when it came to Malloy, Christ the King, and Hayes. They look like seasoned veterans, not young guys. So it's a credit to my staff, to these guys as the starting five, to care about the, the role players and the bench guys, and, and guys understanding what they needed to do. Uh, but it goes back to preparation, and, and we take pride on that. These guys could all tell you behind the scenes, you know, uh, we're really, and I'm really attention to detail yes. and organized, and, and they make fun of me at times for that. But I think. Uh, that, detail, that, that, right? <laughs> uh, gets us to where to gets us to we as a program have gotten and uh, that that's big for us but credit the young guys for listening to these older guys and my staff definitely I wanted to um, piggyback off your your coaching staff you you do a great job like your pick and pop like you getting ready for the season because I know a lot of minutes wasn't there previous, so now you get more minutes as the season went on. How 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 you transition? How you got better? I feel like this off season, I worked a lot more on my conditioning and my consistency when I'm on the court. So I was usually um, my trainer Ross. He works for Probes Inc. He also teaches uh, coaches a lot of NBA players and stuff. So I would just go there every day, get up a lot of shots, a lot of threes. And now it's just transitioning to, into my game. Yeah, because you 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 played y'all played Hayes game one at Hayes, and you know I, I ain't catching too many step games until the season really kick off. So I'm like, who Pat got out here? At the? Because if we know we already know the guys, so mm-hmm. the others when the seniors go off, they plug in the two two or three who leave out. Mm-hmm. You stepped in well. You stepped in well. How Osley stepped in well. I'm, he ain't here, but. How obviously Junior, I don't like he shoot the he shoot the leather off that ball. Like it's it was that game against Hayes. I was like, how he and Pat still got him out there like that that long? But you know that come with trust. Y'all come with understanding, come with learning. Danny, like how being out some of these games this season, because I know you missed a few, probably like eight total. Twelve. Twelve. Okay. All right. Well, my math <laughs> off there. How 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 you felt? Like while sitting out, but you also was supporting your teams, your teammates. I mean, I felt this is kind of a bittersweet feeling because obviously I didn't want to be out, but at the same time, injuries is a part of the game. So me being now, I just try to like study, study the team, see what everybody does well, what people need to work at, and stuff like that. So when I come back in, I know what to help our teammates at in certain areas. So I, just seeing that, it just like I feel like it just helped the team just a little bit more. I, I watched you some games, like, pulling your hair, like, I wish I was out there, I wish I was out there. But I just, over the years, I've been watching Pat, Step, like, it, the core don't change. The faces change, but the core don't change, the system don't change. How, how How's life since starting role? For you at that? Uh, it's been a change because, like, in my old school, I used to like five blocks away from school. Now I gotta like. What school was that? Mineola is in Long Island. Like, okay. <laughs> yo, yo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's an inside joke about. I, I, know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, but uh, no. But like now, it takes me a little while, and the like, competition on the court is like a lot, like higher too. Like the crowd's different. Like Hayes, like first Hayes game, like my first time, like I sold out, like or, like arena or gym or whatever, like Mineola, it was nothing like that. So what was your preparation for the game? Um, did the um, boogie and them let like tell you like, yo, this is the one? Uh, yeah, well, he was like, he was like, they're gonna say a lot, they're gonna chant a lot of things, they're gonna say a lot of things, like the crowd behind, like the student yeah. section. He's like, don't let it get to you, and um, yeah, I didn't really let it get to me. Who got the best student section in the country? Stepping Rack. 
Say that again. Stepping out. I'm not gonna lie, y'all. Y'all got better over the years. Crowd used to be <laughs> timid, but the last two or three years, that student section. Stepping that jungle. The jungle. Baby. It's, it's the called jungle, the, it's the, the jungle. jungle. Stepping that jungle. Twenty-seven yeah. and three in the last three years here at home, or four years. And the credit to our students and fans and and uh, what they do and the energy they bring. Uh, credit to them. You know, MVPs, man. They they the real MVPs. Yeah. So we had to give the MVP award to one play. I mean, well, one position it'd be the jungle. jungle? The jungle. jungle for sure. That's that's tough. Cause y'all all bring so much. Just the basketball itself. Like I could sit here for hours. Like what y'all could do on and off court. Like USA national team. Y'all do a lot of different things. How do you like they spotlight more on them? Do you like the spotlight more on them? You find with just being laid back, filling in the hole, like, you know, Boogie gets a lot of spotlight. Danny gets spotlight. You like your role? Like, you don't like, you don't really need to be the rock star? That's what they consider. I feel like even though the spotlight is on them, I still have great opportunity here to get my moments because, like, we all have team chemistry. We all work out with each other over the summer. So we all just fit our roles perfectly for each other, and we benefit off of each other. Were you surprised you was called in for the um for the podcast today? No, not really. Because that's what I'm about. Yeah. Everybody knows Chang. This is what I'm about. Mm-hmm. Ross Lam come be here, but this is what I'm about. I I could have just said Pat, come on Pat, but I want to get the others. I could always go to the see Boogie off camera, see Danny Dyke Man and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I I say I need Ben. I need the others. I wish we had time I wanted to bring, because it's a, it's, it's a team sport at the end of the day. I know it's individual awards, achievements, goals, but to check off some of these boxes that y'all checking off is big. I want to I wanna, um, shoot a name, Shep, Al Shep. How, how important Al Shep is to step in that, because me and Al Shep went to um, school. That was my rival. And like I, he was from my neighborhood. I always thought like Shep was like, like God, you coming out of my neighborhood or you know any of them these neighborhoods that we come from that the percentage low is to come out. I always cheer on it. He went, he did, he did a lot of stuff that normal people in our neighborhood didn't do. How y'all feel about Shep? I mean, I feel like he gives like a different perspective than the coaches. You know, the coaches are the coaches, but. He used to play the game, you know, so no offense to the coaches, but, like, he gives that different perspective of, like, the player view. You know what I mean? He just gives that insight to the team and tell us what we can work on and get better at. Third on the staff, jump shot-wise. But that's okay. <laughs> oh, 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 no, we know Shaq. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we know Shaq. We know Shaq can't throw a rock in the ocean. We know that. That left hand wind up. We can't throw a rock in no, no, no. We, we know we get no, no, no. For years, he could shoot a butt. Yeah. The other coaches, how important they is to step in that? Cause I know Pat get all the, but he brung, he got his partner on that been with him eight years. How, how important the staff itself? I feel like they're very important. Cause like for example, Shep, he helps out with like the bigs and stuff like that. Cause that's what he knows how to do. And then Coach Alexis, he's more like guard work, shooting and stuff like that. And like other coaches, they just play well off each other. Whether it's Pat and Swain or Alexis and Sharp, like they just get, like they they get well around each other. So it just it helps us translate whatever they're telling us to do and stuff like that. Building, building, keeping the keeping the program to the highest standards, like you said, back. Picking your, how important was picking the right staff? Yeah, I think um, you have to have the guys. That, that one, you do it as a group, that care about the group. And we've had guys that I've let go that care more about, um, and what I see a lot in the game is care more about like being Boogie or Ben's friend versus being their coach. Mm-hmm. And I think what's hard in today's game is the divide, right? And I think as a staff here and as a school as a whole, we've adapted to how to coach in 2023 uh, across athletics in general, not just basketball, but uh, it's how do you divide? And you could ask these guys. I tell them that you could have as much fun as you want because ask the guys ahead of you what the next level is like. 
Yeah. And unfortunately, it's it was a business, and it's still continuing to be a business, and becoming more and more business with NIL, coaches deals, shoe deals, right? So for these guys, you got to enjoy being 14 to 18 playing here. But I think it's the diversity of the staff here, and guys understanding their roles, and and not caring, right? Um, whatever it might be, uh, and knowing that these guys here and the, and the remaining nine guys on the team know you know what everybody brings and and take pride in, in doing it the right way and, and that's what i teach these guys and and we as a staff try to teach doing things the right way and i think that's why year in year out we're able to be right there right there in march because winning's hard and and winning in march is even harder uh winning in the chsa is in march hard, is even yeah. harder you know so i think it's a it's a collaborative effort from your best player to your 15th player to the staff, to the managers, to the trainer, to everybody in between. We're fortunate enough to have a great support staff. And then all these guys in here too, they're families. I mean, our, our families going, adapt yeah. and understand the culture here. And at times there's, I'm not gonna lie, there's times they don't like me. Oh yeah, and, and they, they don't like their own, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, teammates on the team. But but at times you you put that beside yourself and you see what the ultimate goal is and, and, and the reward and the reward was Sunday. Uh, believe the last two is this one of the hardest schedules y'all put together this year probably this year 2018 and there was so many similarities 18 we played in city of palms 18 we went two and two at city of palms 18 we went to delaware we were fortunate enough we flipped it we lost to paul you know beat paul the oh, sixth so yeah. and uh we went to who paul that year we lost versus a national team we did this year there was just so many that year in 18 our last loss was tyona prep Right, that was the last time they had, they had you know, gotten us on a big oh, stage. Yeah, yeah. So, like, there were so many similarities to 18. Uh, we won it all. Um, but I would say this year, 18, is probably the hardest. And, and we're almost locked in for next year already, which would be even crazier. Um, so, I think the issue with New York, too, is not all, but some coaches care more about the W than helping these kids out. Yeah. So, we could play anybody in New York and not get on a plane or a bus. Well, what's that going to do for these guys here? Well, what does that do for for them and being Major, seen, yes. being ranked, being able to say I played against this guy, that guy, played against this team, you know, for for personal win seven non league games, and that's why it's those same guys are like, you know, we can't keep kids. Kids are leaving New York. Kids are that. Yeah, you know, you're not sending them. You're not taking them to experience everything else. Yeah, and I'm not. Everybody's different, but can you give them exposure and the platform? You know, and and. There's guys that do it in New York, and, and credit to them because that's what it's about, you know. Um, and even in our league, there's more and more that, you know, they keep saying, "Oh, the prep schools are stealing my kids or coming after our kids." Give them what the prep schools are doing. Yeah, put the schedule together. Put Ben. How's I know recruitment is like probably the thing you talk about, think about the most. How you how's recruitment for you? Oh, recruitment as of recent has been uh, going, right? Going. I have four Division Two offers, a couple interests in Division One and a lot of Division Three high major. I mean high um, academics. So um, we just keep on going with the season, see how it goes. Okay, you um, you you got a time frame where you try to make a decision, or you just going for now federations, and yeah. I know the end of the season. So you, your mother gonna probably see this and she gonna be bugging me. Can you shout your mother out, please? So please, shout out to my mom. That's my everything. Yeah, I, I don't need her running down on me. <laughs> cha ching, cha ching, running down me. But you know, like like Coach said though, like support it starts at home. So I see some of y'all parents, like me and Boogie Pop, Danny. I, I see a lot of y'all parents, and it's the support is there. So it got to be a balance of both support on the court and off the court. Because his days probably ain't gonna like Pat. You probably ain't gonna like media. You're not gonna like none of that. Like, I wanted to just, we wanted to do an episode based off y'all. We, we did one at the PSAL, but they're gonna be shocked to see I came in stepping at and got the coach, five starters, and I'm in the chairman office. I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. I know. I know y'all got a lot of y'all got a busy schedule stuff. Y'all got to get ready for workouts and stuff. We, we, we got five more minutes. All right, so I got five more minutes. I'm just gonna go around. 
let my audience, let the people know, because this is, oh, this goes, this is getting out. Something they don't know about you. Uh, something that people don't know about me. Um, uh, All right, how about a better one? What's your, what's your end goal? Uh, my end goal is step back is to get an offer to play at Division One level. Well, oh, my end goal. Uh, my end goal, I step, probably to get another city chip, probably win two state federation titles, uh, and just get better than I was this year for next year. Man. My end goal, I step in, I, uh, I met one of them, the city championship, and now it's just, my other one is to win the federation, and then my other one is to play basketball in college. My end goal, I step, to leave here with three city chips. That's what y'all talking about every day? <laughs> I will get that most watch. I will, I will, I will, I'm going to let the most in the school. I believe That's so. the most in the school, man? Is no, no. Is that three? No, no, no. no but nobody. The nobody most is one. We have three since 1960. 1960, okay. 2018. So, so y'all went two. Yeah. Y'all already meet yeah. the goal. Yeah. Yeah. Back, I'm going to win three. Back. Back. Same question for you. Um, my angle, I step back, I'm trying to go back to back city championships. I'm also trying to win back to back federation titles. And I want to play a Division One college basketball. Well, Pat, you can sign us up, man. Well, I appreciate you guys being here um, mm -hmm. and, and venturing out of the PSAL. You know, it's nothing but respect for <laughs> those you know guys. What, you know what, Pat? No, no, no. Because I, for some reason, I just, they I mean, love to change, but like I can't get. They don't give me the wiggle room in the cafe. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're right. I got nothing out. Smoke, bud. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, everybody in the in the you know PSL. Ron. You know, uh, who else we screwed in the PSL? Rose. Yeah. I got nothing but love for those guys. But it's it's good to have you. Yeah, you know, in the Catholic League and and see what you know what what the the, the Stepanak High School. Uh, situation is up here in White Plains. Definitely. Uh, a little different than being deep in Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. You definitely got to go to but, Brooklyn uh, tomorrow night. No, we appreciate everything you do and, and your guys around New York. You know, and I think um, for us here and, and for these guys here, uh, they earned, right? They earned Sunday. Um, and I told them that after the game. It, it, like I said, a lot of people have been giving me the credit, you know, and, and it's me, Swain, Al, Alexis. And then, you know, obviously well-deserved, obviously Boogie, Danny, and Ben got all playoff or all league or all tournament. But as Ben said in an interview Sunday afternoon, it was if Jordan didn't play like he did and, and Braylon and Howard's three and Josiah and Dylan's block and the bench cheering and, you know, down the list, we don't get what we want. And in the end, uh, there's not many that, that many programs have won one. You know, and, and in two years or five years now, take out COVID, Stepanak's gotten two since 2018, and, and the goal is to get three, you know, and four or five, and, and that's what we're about here. So we appreciate your guys' coverage, what you do for New York basketball. Definitely. And uh, sometimes we get categorized a little outside the city, but, hey, we're city champs. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I still New York, York for me. I don't want to <laughs> play. I, I, I still consider New York, man. I, I, from the Good Brothers... Rosslam come be here, Ike, visionary. I want to just personally say thank y'all. Thank you. You had to take time out y'all day. Y'all didn't have to, but y'all did it. So I had, so this pad this considered my favorite I used. I guess so. This probably <laughs> there's no. If y'all see me up and stepping that too much, I won't pat on favorites. But appreciate y'all tuning in. Um, I'll let y'all know when the episode drop. I know y'all got a busy week getting prepared for uh, federations and the ones that's getting ready for AAU. I mean, good luck, man. Like you said, y'all don't stop at one. It's, it's more two, three. Send Pat, send Pat all right. You get three, you can get three, two, three. No, and then the next class will come in. But I appreciate y'all really coming up here, taking the time out and just sharing the light on y'all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
summertime rolly i'm back for revenge yes i'm about my business yeah. the voice of trenches when i talk you know they listen Slime. this shit was given we just starting and never ending place us in a dollar give a fuck about a visit yeah. free clizzy won't